minus 20 seconds. Hello guys and dolls, welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are taking a look at the Bamboo Labs X1 series combo, which has finally turned up. I am joined by Mike, who when asked did she put up a fight, the answer was yes she did, and that's why he did six years inside. And I'm also joined by Carl Fenton, a man who recently confided in me that he doesn't like the NHS, and he thinks that all nurses are lazy. Bold statements from both. But here we are. So, this has been a long time coming. Let's be really clear. This is not a review printer. This was paid for by one of our very generous fans. Who's got their mic on reverb? Is it me? Don't know. But you're the it only one me. who spoke, so not ideal is it hold on let's try turning that down a little bit and see if that works okay let's hope that that's better is that better okay we'll pretend that it is so brilliant um so anyway so this is uh, this has been donated by a very generous long time watcher and supporter of the channel uh, we will be keeping it because hey it's nice it's cool it's cool and i want it so um so this is the carbon combo kit so this is the x1 carbon which is the aluminium and glass version and i'm pretty sure that it should also have the uh it should also have the uh ams in here as well so the kickstarter finished on the bamboo labs a while ago Almost everybody, I would imagine, will have heard of the Bamboo uh, Lab printer. It was a lot of different uh, YouTubers and influencers were raving about how good it was. Um, was clear for a bit. Yeah, that makes sense. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Mike, do you want to turn your um, thing down a little bit? We'll see whether or not it... Yeah. Well, okay. Fair enough. Um, so anyway, so um, let me see if I can turn my microphone down a little bit. Maybe it's, maybe it's me. There we go. Right. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so this was obviously an incredibly popular Kickstarter. Uh, there were a lot of people who backed this. There's been varying degrees of feedback in, uh, in different areas. Uh, so, there's some people who have really loved this machine. There's been a couple of people who have not loved it quite as much. Carl, who was it the other day who put up theirs? Uncle Jesse put his up fairly recently, and he really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, it's your boy in space on TikTok's got another one now, I believe. Right. Okay, fair enough. Uh, who else is there? Uh, Modbot's done a bit lately on it again. You know, like um, some information afterwards you know about how it's done durability wise yeah um there's a lot of companies releasing the pi sheets now for it and they've got their own yes there are well. so that's one of the criticisms that quite a few people have had so there's quite a few people who have criticized the bed surface quality i what the i thought the glue stick was for to help it stick it's actually to be a release agent that's what yes. i've worked so, out and this is actually the reason why people started using hairspray on 3d printers so time was all you really ever used to get on 3d printers was either glass or mirror so um so if you try to use pet g um so if you if you try to use pet g on glass it like bombs with the glass and it's really really hard to get it off so people were putting hairspray down. Oh, uh, one second, Mark. I had to put you on mute. Sorry. There we go. Go for it. What was that? That's when you see people sticking them in freezers and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. The glass yeah. Is yeah. yeah. So, um, so uh, the reason why people were using hairspray was literally as a release agent, so that it would actually so it would actually come off. You could actually get the thing off without having to jam a like a scraper into the side of your prints or anything else. So I have been told that it is relatively complicated to get this out of a box. And let's be really clear, 
we know I have a history with boxes. So, uh, so let's see how we get on opening this up. I'm half tempted to literally just cut this straight down the side, but I know for a fact that if I do that, then I'm just going to end up scratching this thing. So I don't really want to do that. Maybe, and uh, people might have noticed I'm finally in a finished workshop. He is indeed. So let me, let's go to normal size. Do you want to? So it took us five days over the course of like, four weeks it was bad as well it was bad like physically broke me more than once it's just stuff you don't see so like the floor in it was concrete but there was huge holes in it so the floor had to be repaired and then we had to screed the entire floor before we could put flooring down yeah, yeah. But james sent me pictures you know when you first started on it and like the bad, difference, like in a day. Well, it ain't yeah. like an entire roof because the roof, um, when it rained, more water came in than if I had no roof at all, which was weird. <laughs> Makes a lot of Always sense. Way. Let's just have a look. Sorry, I am just looking at my hot keys. That's what I thought. One. And I did pick up this lovely toolbox earlier which has got all my 3D printing tools and all my electronics and stuff like that in it, which so I really love. So you're organized now? Super organized. Because before I just had a big box where everything was in it. Yeah, and you I could have... never find anything because everything was in it. Yeah, I've got a couple of them boxes. Oh, I've broken all my hotkeys. Oh, yeah, right. so on the bamboo left, uh, Facebook group, some of the you know, the photos mint new ice dragon, yeah, that he released. Um, filament friends is it Tom Jackson? The one he's done is just immense. I printed it in like a, a silver or a metallic silver sort of color with like Scott uh, saying, like a greeny ice color. <laughs> so, Scott saying that. He was debating on getting one, but he didn't want to spend members' money just to find out that one blew off after six months. So, look, it's a legitimate concern, and it's a concern that a lot of people have, right? It's not necessarily in whether or not this is a great machine now. It's how does this machine perform in six months? How does this machine perform in a year? And will I be able to get spares? I can't honestly answer that question um, other than... Bamboo Labs is made by uh, Bamboo Labs is run by a couple or a few, sorry, ex DGI um, engineers. Now, DGI are obviously very well known for some of their fantastic products. That does not necessarily mean that this is going to be a fantastic product. It's a bit like when somebody says, "Oh, they've hired a bunch of ex Tesla engineers." And you're like, "Okay, cool. So, so what? <laughs> so." Have a look and oh nice. Oh no. This opens the wrong way, clearly. Super dry pack. So in the rest of the box, there's four spools of filament. So is Scott from the hack space near you? Yes, it is, yeah. I've got a printer to bring up to you. I don't know if there's anybody in the hack space on Saturday. So you would burn um, in the similar way with the loose box. See, I see loads of good stuff about the loose box. So the Lowell's bots are fantastic machines. Like, they really are. Um, but, again, their support can be ropey. They might do a TiVo. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, let's just be I, I, really clear. This it, one's it, actually turned up. So they've already, they're already quite a few, um, they're already quite a few, uh, there were already quite a few steps ahead of uh, of TiVo in that instance. Yeah, I think if you polish the TiVo, it wouldn't come out looking like that. I I would so if you polish the TiVo, it right, just rub away and it disappeared. We we uh, we threw away our TiVo Hydra. We took it to the tip and we threw it in there. I wouldn't let the guys at the tip um, keep it 
because I was throwing away a couple of old broken machines. And I was like, you can have this one. This one's fine. It's just not a great machine. We haven't got space. There's no one really who would want to donate it to because it's really it's not really that good. Like, you can have this. Don't have this one. There are cheaper ways to set your house on fire than this. Yeah. It's, it was absolutely appalling, that TiVo. Um, Scott, arrange with either me or James. We'll pop down to Saturday because you can have my Gufu printer. Ooh. The one that goes up to 400 degrees on the hot end. So everything so far is really well packed, I'll say that. Like, there's no... None of this stuff is moving about in transit. Like, this is... This is really, really well packed. I know there have been a couple of people that have had issues where um, where their parcel has been damaged in transit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've noticed. A few I don't of them on think the that's anything to do with the way this is packed. I think it's just to do whether or not you know your local um, your local courier kicks the kicks the crap out of it or not. Ooh. So this is the screen. So again, I like I like that they did this. So um, so the screen originally inside it, wasn't it? There's, there's just a connector inside. Hold on, there we go. It's just a connector inside, and it connects onto the front of the machine here. But they shipped it unattached because they knew that that being on there was going to end up being snapped. Yeah. So I like the fact that they did that. So the one just... thing I really like about what they've done is they they did a really good way of advertising it online with youtube and TikTok and yeah. all that and then obviously people backed it and then they started releasing like the prices for parts and spare yeah. nozzles and like they're cheap yeah so some of them parts are half the price what it would cost someone to replace a hot end on a an ender three yeah like so the only caveat i would make to that and the thing that i don't necessarily understand although appreciate i haven't used the thing yet is that if we take a look at let's see if i can get closer to that this is hold on there we go this is the new nozzle so this is a let me get this out of the box so this here when you want to change the nozzle there we go right there when you want to change the nozzle you change the whole heat sink this is where your thermistor goes and everything and this is obviously your um this is obviously your nozzle but it's it's an all-in-one unit which means that is completely proprietary now i hope that that doesn't mean you can you know i hope that means that these parts will continue to be relatively cheap and they will continue to be relatively easy, to get. easy to get hold of. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's, that's yeah. the main thing. Are they easy to get? Yeah. See, and this is an issue that I that I found quite a lot. Hi, random Z Y. Random, 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 random Mizzy. Random Mizzy. Random Mizzy. There we go. I I, I know words. Um. So uh. So, so. Okay. I don't just want to start yanking on this, but it does feel like there's got to be a way that this comes out. That's easier than i think it is oh do you have to unscrew it i think you have to unscrew it okay we'll do that so yeah i think longevity of this printer especially if people are printing at such rapid speeds it's got a wear and tear quite easily yeah i mean because the hard, even... so on the on the carbon it it's it's reinforced nozzles it's hardened nozzles and all that stuff like, I think it will have a fairly good shelf life. It all depends, I suppose, on his screwed in. <laughs> I know. I found the screws. There we go. Look at that. So this is, let's just go back to here. This here is the AMS. This is the multi-material. That was a nice pill. Okay, so that seems odd because it feels unnice on the sides. That's why. Right. 
there's some good peels so i've seen people on the group complaining that this the ams unit actually jumps off the top of the printer sometimes you know when it's changing filament so hold on there we go let's just cool Oh, oh, there's loads of screws. Is there loads of screws? It feels like there's loads of screws. Let's see what happens. So there's uh, the, there's screws in this to stop the build plate from moving about, which is quite clever. And there's a bunch of little red arrows inside. So you can see them here, literally point out where the screws are so that you can get a uh, get a tool in there to be able to remove all of these. I know one issue that people have had. Um, I got the new designed AMS, did I? Okay. Um, I know one of the issues people have had is with, um, is with the part cooling fan coming loose. So this part cooling fan on the side here, um, yeah, non-stick. They did um they did a slight redesign on the AMS. Did they? I believe so, yeah. From everyone that had it uh, before the kit started. Right. They changed it slightly. Um Paul probably knows a bit more about it, but yeah, they fitted it slightly different. Yeah. It's fitted with side locks for the lid. Yeah. Right, okay. Because I know it's your boy was talking about he was waiting for his um the new AMS unit to come as well, because obviously he's got the, the, the original one. Oh, they did not want this moving, did they? I feel like this has wronged somebody in a past life, and they were very, they were very upset with it. So this is a thingy, a bed, a bed. <coughs> Right, let's see if we can get into. So we just need this last one here. I'm just trying to find where this last screw is over here. Here we go. There's also screws underneath. Of course, there are. So I don't think I've ever had, um, or at least I don't recall having a printer where I had to actually unscrew stuff to be able to to be able to start. Now. There we go. So, ah, oh, there's more screws underneath it. <laughs> but that does feel a touch wasteful, I'm not like, because this is just trash now. So Kane does printing now. Yeah, Mike's um, Mike's had James busy around there sorting out his uh, garage. Like it, it nearly killed us. It really nearly did. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't a fan of doing that. <laughs> to be fair it was quite a lot of work it was it was long days weren't it it weren't like yeah it was it was long days we put into it so we had to re-concrete some of the floor then screed the floor then lay a floor paint all the walls run all the electrics because it had no electrics in it whatsoever plasterboard the ceiling get the electrics running in, run all the plug sockets because there was no power, get all the electric connected, add a new roof on it, a new door. Anything else? Oh, and plus build a wall where the main garage door is. Yeah. Busy, busy. What have you been working on then, Carl? Um, I've been doing a little bit of a uh print shed upgrades i've um i've put some shelving units in and put some printers in and getting ready for the winter mine tech um it was worse than that it was worse than that because it lasted like four or five days so i've got i've got a little resin section there which i've got some perspex coming so i'm gonna make sure that's enclosed and have my fans and vents and everything going Got a printer down there. 
all crap up there. I've got my wash and cure there on a little shelf. And I've got all my FDMs in there now, for now. And then I've got my lasers. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. Have you, have you, are you putting the lasers back on the wall? That they are on the wall. Like, there's one there. And then there is and the other one. You have to excuse the light. So they're, they're mounted on the wall. Um, right. I want to try and... I've got an old shelf unit there, which I'm going to try and put... Um, change me enclosure I made, my wooden one, just so it sits on top. Um, only because the vent's there. But it's a bit... It, it, I've got a bit more space in here now, so I can still have more crap in there and not trip over it all the time. You got more space, but it looks smaller when you're on screen. Yeah, I think it's because that's behind me. Because like I had the corner I'm in now where my desk is, that was all work surface, and it was just covered in printers. And then this had all my resin over there. It was just a mess. But here's what so it this is. This garage will will haze get a lot of tiny fractures and cracks on it when exposed to resin. Pair for it to look all hazy and crappy if you don't if you get any resin on it. To okay. be honest, I, I get resin everywhere, so I was gonna say I definitely get resin everywhere. I, I, I'm, 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 I know regularly has res, resin into their body. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I've had resin in my mouth, in my eyes. I'm gonna get a Matt Farmer apron. I'm gonna get a picture put on with the resin printing god around it just to wear when I'm doing it. Well, then resin. you just get a CSI suit. Yes. Then you can put the hood up and draw the string, and then you've only got this on show. Yeah, I, I, I can take the lid off a resin bottle that I'm opening for the first time and still get covered in it. Okay. And I, Is that if how I'm supposed to go. Don't if I'm messing with my resin printers and I put gloves on, I don't get it anywhere. As soon as I put gloves on, it's like I've just won an F1 race and it's going everywhere. It's ridiculous. I see someone dropped like a whole bottle of resin today on the uh, Mono X group. He went to go and empty it out of the vat and it just went everywhere. <laughs> I thought I was bad. Okay, so there's a bunch of things that I need to take out. Best of way to family. clean resin off acrylic is car polish. To be honest, I take my cards for cleaners, so I don't need polish. Uncle Jesse did the wood glue. That this will resonate on screens. Everyone does different I, things, don't they? But my 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 acrylic covers are a mess. I suppose that's what they're there for. So there's some desiccant bags in here. I'll be interested to see how well it actually does at like keeping moisture at bay, because that doesn't feel particularly. Um, I mean, it, it's pretty sealed, so I don't think uh, I don't think it'll be too bad. But be interested to see how well it actually does at keeping moisture out. It'd be quite good to keep the temperature regulated as well inside, wouldn't it? Because I've got a crappy Creality fully enclosed one, and it regulates the heat at like 35 degrees, just normal PLA. Yeah. And that's in the middle of winter. Just makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Having something that can, like you said, uh, I've got a couple of people that have got these, and I'm like, get selling parts from the Voron website. You know, on the Discord, people are selling all the parts for building Vorons and. You yes. make your money back. You make your money back with this printer. I mean, look, I think so. So there's already a number of suppliers that are offering. Um, I'm just going to pop this glass here for a moment. Um, so there's already a load of third party suppliers that are looking to try and uh, try and offer like the flex sheets and things like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, but so many of the parts are sort of are so bespoke i don't really see how you could like i don't really see how you could uh, how anybody else would be able to offer a different like like i don't see anybody i don't see how anybody else would be able to offer a different um a different option than buying it direct so that goes 
under there. Just like, nope. Cool. Yep. I'm gonna take this glass off. I feel like it sits on the glass. It must do. Yeah, it's yeah, still got to be sealed, like doesn't it? Yeah, it's still got to be sealed, so it must sit on the glass. Okay, fine. So then this sits on top like this. And one of these. So it does say on the website that you can daisy chain these. So it reckons on the website you can have up to five of these AMS units like daisy chained in, which, I mean, that seems like an insane amount of filament that you could have at your disposal at any one time. Yeah, I was actually thinking about this. How much are the ASM bits to buy? On their own? How much are they to buy on their own? Excellent question. Let's have a little look. So, oh, nonstick says four of them for oh, 12. Is it four? 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah, 16 colors you can have. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I, I was trying to think um, about who would actually put 16 rolls of white filament in there. Oh, uh, who would do that? I, I'm not quite sure. Do we know anyone? I, I was who, just thinking. Who, 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 I can't think of anybody. Not off the top of my head. I was just thinking who could have the most boring white prints. Oh, I barely okay. know anyone. So, huh. so to buy <laughs> to buy a AMS is three hundred and forty nine US dollars. Wow! And if you want more than one AMS on a unit, you need to buy the AMS hub, and the yeah. AMS hub is another fifty US dollars. And that's before shipping. So that's that's not that's that's a lot. Right. So this pushes into but but for that price, you can't buy anything for another printer that can give you multi filaments at that price. You can buy the pallet. Yeah. I mean the closest you can buy really. So you can buy the pallet. The pallet does up to eight, eight and then the pallet but, pro does twelve, I think. But they're expensive. Like, like they're very expensive, yes. And so, um, like, if you've got this printer, ask George's gaming guy because he's got one and he's never used it. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> uh, no, he has. He has used it. He just never really got it working the way that he wanted. See, and this is the issue that I have, right? When it comes to um, when it comes to multicolor printing, this this has the poop shoot, which uh, which is at the back. But as well, it also has um, it also has a purge block that's inside. So, what you're effectively saying is that this doubles up on it. Surely, the whole purpose of getting to sort of the golden world of of, of sort of, of color changing is where you don't have any wastage. Like I know that I know that Prusa's MMU was experimenting for a while of doing the purge in the infill rather than having yeah. to use a purge yeah. block. I have to admit, I've never had an MMU from them, so I don't know how easy or hard that was to do. Um, oh, this just got an idea, didn't it? Look at that. So. It is a cool-looking printer. That does yeah. look nice. So we're not quite turning on yet because... We're going to stick in. Right, we've got their PLA basic here. So we'll start with this. I think it makes sense to start with the PLA basic because I said so. And it's probably the easiest. <laughs> I haven't got much of a justification for that, actually. Right, so. Well, that's a fun question. Which one is one? It's got to be this one, isn't it? Let's pretend it is. It's very noisy. Is that the AMS? Is it Paul? It's noisy. Oh, this is where we find out that I. Oh, there we go. 
cool. All right, fine. So let's turn it on. Hold on. Oh. Right, and it's a kind of magic. It's alive. Bang! Oh. Okay. Wait till it starts and does its resonance. Right. So we are going to select. So hold on. So let's zoom this in a little bit. Oh. Hold on. Right. English. Oh, next. <laughs> right. Let's just take that off whilst I put in the password. Lest I have some of you creepy lizards turn up at my house and start wrecking my Wi Fi. Question is, do I know my password? Well, last time you were doing this, I'm not looking good. <laughs> you put in the wrong Wi Fi. That is true. I was doing that. Did that for a while. Yeah. Right. Thanks to this. So next on that, scan the QR code and log into the printer. So that's on the B on the Bamboo Handy app. Bamboo Handy. So they've, they've updated the slicer, haven't they now? I believe so, so. I have downloaded it. So apparently you're able to put like your name on a print now. So you can put your, you know, you can put your model in and then you can have like honey badger put on it somewhere and i believe prusa had just done that as well if your wi-fi name is unique it can be used to geolocate you by the way so try not to show that in the videos confirm bind binding this shouldn't be confused. This shouldn't be confused with soul bonding, which for anyone who watches Rick and Morty is a very different affair. Uh, I've logged in. Login successful. Next. Thank you for purchasing Bamboo Labs. Right. Agree. Yeah. The printer needs to be calibrated for the please unlock the hotbed before calibration. So we've already taken the screws out that are in here. So hold on. Let's, so you can see is that I haven't yet taken out all of the. Um, so I've undone these. None of these are screwed in, but I can't get that bed. I can't get the rest of that. I can't get the rest of that foam out until this moves up. So next, calibration may take several minutes. Okay, calibrate. Scoop, scoop. There we go. What do you reckon? Door open or closed? You can't really see anything if the door's closed, can you? No. Oh, it does sound loud. Hey, Jerry. So this is now doing its homing. So I'm assuming it gets loud when it does like um, it does have a light. I can't turn that on yet. Can I? Oh, it is on. Oh, that's quite dim. All right. Oh. Hi, Jerry. I've never been so fascinated to watch a printer home. I mean, it's just doing its thing now. I just saw that. I think I just saw that. Oh, hello. So interestingly, I would debate that you need to, um, is the loudest printer they've ever owned, Edge of 3D. <laughs> I mean, it could very well be, yeah. 
So this is it obviously doing its um, its resonance test, which I don't know if you could hear. Nah. Does get oh, loud. Oh, yeah, some, <laughs> some buzzing noise. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll close the door for a minute. Is the is the start process now on this still the same, like a ten minute leveling? So, I've so I, I I've had I've heard sort of complaints from different people about different things. So I've heard complaints that because it does the uh, it does the lidar test and it does that yeah. initial um, it does that sort of initial line that it does take a really long time to actually start a print. Um, is that true? I, I, I get probably like I don't I don't know, maybe a little bit. Hi, Eric. Um, so like so. This what it's doing now, the resonance test is actually what Clipper does with an ADXL. Um, yeah. So it's actually the next step that I'll be doing on my um, when I it's the next step that I'm doing when I'm doing my rat rig. So for those who have been following the rat rig, thank you very much for bearing with us because it has taken an insane amount of time. I could have planted one of my other printers and grown a whole printer tree during this time. There is ages. a funny video of the rat rig. Yes, yeah. So I, uh, so I inadvertently miss. Well, I I obviously didn't wire up the BL Touch correctly, um, and when I turned the machine on, it caught more on fire than you would want it to. I'd put it that way. <laughs> there was an actual puff of smoke came out of it. The magic smoke did come out. Like That's puff the magic good. dragon. We all know that the magic smoke that lives inside of electronics is what makes them go. And when it comes out, that's bad. <laughs> well, the rat rig, it was like Snoop Dogg at one point. It was just sitting there, just <laughs> puffing away. Just like it completely lit up. It was, it was not, it was not ideal. So, uh, I considering it was supposed to be blue, it was bright red inside. Yeah. Yeah. Bear in mind, it's a blue light on that particular one. Wasn't when I did it. That was really bright, <laughs> really, really bright orange. And uh, it smelled smelt like the bad stuff. Like it wasn't like not the, not the good stuff. Like like bad bad stuff. Not things not things you'd want to smoke. Was this before like, or after you sent the video yesterday? You were running away from things. That kind of stuff. Was that was this before or after the video you posted in the group yesterday with it working? That was that was that was it. That was it uh, at its at its leak. I tried rewiring it and uh, I did not do it better. So um, I thought initially it was a loose connection. That was that was not the case. So um, so, so I did it again, and it um, was worse than that one was. Um, so uh, so that was quite alarming. There we go. It's completed the calibration. Start to print. Jesus, already. So have we got test things on here? Oh, we have. Okay. Are we going to do Benji? What should we do? Oh, a new firmware. Go on then. We'll do the firmware upgrade first. And we'll leave that to update. Non-stick, what have you got printing on yours then at the moment? I think last I saw, so non-stick has a quite a large tronxy. Um, it's a coffee uh, table. Well, yes, which he's currently using as a cupboard. Um, it's certainly not a 3D printer um so uh so he's been he's been using that for, for as a as a big cupboard for a while and one of his reasons he claims that he's been doing that is because um he thinks that he that there's been some brackets and some stability issues i wouldn't know how he knows this because he's not printed with it but hypothetically in a world where he had printed with it he feels that's the material issue so he's been he's been in carbon fiber on his new um on his new uh carbon because he also has one of the x1 carbons um he has been printing some new or he will be printing some 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 brackets to uh to stabilize his cupboard so that it can Cre support like you know full plates or the weight of his dragon. parents disappointment probably it could probably support that if on a, on a really good day or the shame <laughs> he brings on his ancestors one of the two like his... <laughs> non-stick needs to print a b doesn't he in multicolor he could print a B in multicolor, yeah. yeah, because then at Big least he would be able to say that that was was the a one B, that came back all the time, and that was that was the same B that he saw every time. It's Unlike just, the 
the the frankly accusatory claims that he's had up until this point that a <laughs> bee whose lifespan is really quite short has been has been following him for an extended period of time. Well, no, he's, you could now class it as being a pet bee. A pet bee, yeah. Yeah, you could you could absolutely if you were an insane person, you could say the words, I believe that he has a pet bee. I don't think that would be healthy for anybody to admit. And it would be a real alarm bell if so if it, if an adult person, the four-year-old said it to me, I'd be like, fair enough. As far as four-year-olds are concerned, all bees are the same. Like they just start calling them all Tim. Is Tim the bee? That's fair enough. I'd hundred percent get that. But if you saw an adult person who said to you, I have a pet bee, you'd move away from on the bus because you know they've pooed in a bag. Like, and, and, and they've all got the same moustache, haven't they, these bees? Yeah, it's a miracle. yeah, and they've all got the same hilarious, yes. slightly Spanish moustache. <laughs> 40 Towers. Yeah. So while Man this is... Um... Oh, okay. So it's I've also been printing parts of my trunk, this, see. This, the other... So I'm going to put the glue stick on here while we wait. It feels really bad to put this on straight away. Can I not just use hairspray? People Probably have been, haven't they? Have they? I've seen people putting videos on they're using hairspray, not glue stick. They, they do the same job, don't they? It's just personal preference. It's just clean. Minute, won't we? This glue is where Paul immediately writes up. Don't put hairspray on it. What did you put on yours? You always tell me too late, Paul. Not non-stick's got a hatred for glue stick, hasn't he? He does have a hatred for glue and the French, which I've found very inappropriate. Seeing as he's never been. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is quite hard to uh, to get on straight, isn't it? There we go. Right. Well, it's quite hard for me to get on straight anyway. I didn't use the glue stick. Of course you didn't. Need to go. Fingers crossed it all goes well. It's going swimmingly at the moment. Like, it's not even on fire. Yeah. Well, it's updating at the moment. So, like, <laughs> so even I can't screw that bit up. Well, that's not true. I could. Like, I could just cut the power for no reason. Wait, the only Teddy. Oh, what's wrong with Teddy? Other than the fact that all of his videos I have to watch with subtitles on, which I'll admit yeah. is annoying, but he is also French speaking French, so it does make a lot of sense. Like it's yeah. not it's not like he's it's not like he's singling me out to have to make me do it. I could just not be lazy and learn French. Like it's I think, I think it could be, he shouldn't but... be going around speaking all French. That's yeah. true. Him over there with his own customs and language, it's disgusting. I, I think the <laughs> hatred towards Teddy could be the uh the V four hundred he's got or the snap maker he's Has got. He? That yeah. is true. Yes, I forgot the yes, because RBD's got one as well, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for those for those who I mean, I'm sure everybody on here is aware by now, but um, but yeah, the uh there's the um there's the V four hundred from FL Sun has just launched, which is one of and I'm not gonna say the only yeah. because there probably is another that I don't know about, but it's one of the only production machines that comes from the factory with clipper on it i yeah. can't think of any others that come with clipper on them mass manufactured i mean obviously voron and rat rig and yeah. all those guys they they are custom builds by any stretch um and then you know and then they've got clipper on but as far as i know it's the yes. only one that comes with clipper out the box yeah and it's so um, um so that's and, and i mean the speeds that i've seen there've been yeah. something special yeah it's getting a lot of praise isn't it it's pe people are probably saying it's one of the better pre if this wasn't out this bamboo labs wasn't out the v400 yeah. would probably yeah. be if they've well, done they've uh, also got they've got their fl sun screen coming out haven't they which is basically plug and play clipper yeah and it fits um, on the sr oh tim's getting one is he really that's cool yeah, the, the, I say the, the, the V400 from, from from FL Sun is a really, really cool machine. Yeah, and, and, and it doesn't look cheap, if you know what I mean. It looks well-made. It's manufactured well. Like, they've not scrimped on parts, have they, really, with it? I'm sure he'll show you. I'm sure he'll show you before he gets your hands on one. Yeah, it's one of the 119 for the screen. Yes, 
But the thing to remember is the screen isn't just the screen, right? The screen is the screen is a main board, effectively a separate main board with what I assume is a pie in it. Yeah, so you can. It's got, you be can a pie, it's got to be a pie in there. Well, I'm not being funny. You'll pay a hundred dollars for a Pi Three B at the moment. Yeah, you can. So, I think is it four printers with um, clipper on it? You can run it once with it, I believe. I, I, I don't know how many you can run. I mean, I'm not being funny. If you can run four at once from one screen, apart from being incredibly confusing, that would but, be interesting. But don't forget, the screen that comes with the V400 can be used on other clipper devices already. Yes, that is true. There we go. Firmware is updated. Confirm. Right. Let's go back to the files. Yeah, it's 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 exceedingly tall, isn't it, Paul? Hundred. Yeah. Hundred and thousand one. So, yeah, it's tall. It's a big one. Let's pop this back up here so you can see a little bit of the screen. Apologies, I can't zoom in much more any more than that. So uh, so I live with it. But. So you can see this is the bench. It tells you up here it's 24 minutes, 11 grams of filament. Says here, um, place above the uh, place above filaments into AMS slots from left to right according to the sequence. So you can select here which material you want this to be made out of. You can select whether you want it to do the bed leveling and the flow calibration before it prints. So you can deselect either of those if you want to. And then obviously you can press print now. You can't drag around or take a look in any detail at the model, I don't think. So the model picture is the model picture, but we will press print now. And we will have a little look at a benchy. So that goes through the preparing to print stuff. It'll be interesting to see what it does. So we'll do that for there we go. Right. Sounded like a fun little noise, didn't it? Well, oh, no, there's a bit of sticky tape on it, and I can't get it off because it's moving too quickly. Oh, the cover lights up. I like that. It's a little light on the Bamboo Lab front thing. That's nice. Uh, you can set the speeds to ludicrous speed, can you? Well, how do I do... Why is it making such clanky noises? It's so upsetting. Well, it's pushing through the filament quite nicely. So can you actually live stream the camera off the printer here? What's that? Now get the live I camera. I can now working. get the live camera working. They're all live cameras. This is pretty no, on, on the printer. On the printer. Oh yeah, probably. Uh, wonder if I can make it join. <laughs> Invite it. So, no, I suspect I probably can't. Well, I'll figure that out later. <laughs> So I have to say, app. so right, so we've actually got something called uh, Beagle Cam by a company called Minton and or Miniton, I don't remember, but uh, but it is a really good time lapsing camera that um, that literally you um, that you just um, you get an app, you can upload stuff to the app. It's actually very much like a self contained opto print. You plug it into the machine and you can print and you can do time lapses. You can save those to your phone. You can access them via a what are you doing? Oh, it is quite loud in there. So anyway, so we've got a review of the Beagle camera coming. Um, and it's basically a plug and play time lapse thing that you can access anywhere. So you can access it off site and things like that. It's quite good. Um, but this has obviously also got a, uh, I've slated it for the price. I mean, look, it, to be fair, it's it's literally. Let's just watch this. Hold on. You gonna let me? There we go. I've got the bit of plastic off. That's better. Um, so the Beagle camera. Look, I mean, you could just buy a regular webcam and do pretty much anything that it does for um, for 
um, you could do pretty much anything that it does on Octoprint um, for, I would imagine, considerably less. But that being said, to run Octoprint, you do actually need to have a, a Raspberry Pi and you do need to have a webcam. If you've got both of those already, then that's obviously the cheaper way to do it. Yeah. But if you've already got a Ferrari and the cheapest way to drive a Ferrari is to drive it, not to go out and buy a new one. Did you take the foam out of the poop shoe? I did. I did. I knew I did. On the PC, the screen share. Oh, what? In the app? Oh, okay. Hold on. Device. Oh, okay. Hold on. I think we have to add the printer to here. That is loud. I mean, yeah, it's not quiet. It's not quiet. Oh, it is, it is it is loud. Now, admittedly, it's it's loud at the moment, doing its like doing the thing it's doing, but uh, do, so it's doing calibration stuff at the moment. It's actually doing the auto bed level. So I would assume that if you wanted to, you could probably turn that off. But um, but yeah, it's not it's not quiet. So here we go. So what I can do is I can. That was a weird noise. Quite loud, as everyone can hear. <laughs> as everybody can hear. Uh, where are we? Will it let me? Interesting. So it won't let me share that particular. Normally I can share my particular screen, but I'll have to share the entire screen, I think, and then open it up. So there we go. So this is. So the camera's not doing anything at the moment. It's currently. Oh, okay. So it's doing its it's doing its flow tests at the moment. Is it gonna let me load that? There we go. Look at that. So this is the lidar going through and doing its thing. Oh, gets right in your face, doesn't it? So, I mean, so far, pretty easy to set up. What are we at time-wise? We're at an hour. An hour. So, yeah. Oh, there we go. Now it's actually starting. So, it is a 17-minute benchy. What's interesting is that when it um, when it gives you the time, it gives you the time, including how long it's going to take to do the uh, to do the calibration stuff, because it said it would take twenty four minutes, and it's taken that off of the time it's actually going to take to do the benchy. Okay. Okay. Why is it pooping? Okay. Oh, I 
is quite loud. <laughs> <laughs> So this isn't, I'm assuming this isn't ludicrous mode because it's not, it's so, not unbearable. Nonstick says that's for the first layer check. Oh, okay. And it went right. to, uh, makes sense. to Poop Corner. Are you happy? Yes. So I'll say this. I'm sure this camera is very good for, um, for capturing time lapse, but real time not very good like there's that's, that was fairly laggy i'll take it off now but yeah it's a pause to test the bed on the first layer are you happy it didn't ask me if i was happy just to be clear but it, it moves that doesn't it, it on. fair enough just watching that move on that camera is it's rapid yeah so i want to be clear as well right now this printer is obviously on my desk now my desk unfortunately had fine craftsmanship of both me and mike so um so it's not what you would be able to legally call particularly stable but it's also on wheels as well it is also on wheels um so when this is printing out in the out in the office when it's in where it's going to be printing sort of long term um, then obviously that will be on a much more solid platform, which means I'll have to redo the resonance check anyway, because obviously it will currently the resonance it's getting will probably be primarily out of this table. So if this benchy isn't good, that's more than likely the reason why it is chucking that tool head about. And, uh, and I suspect the reason it's doing it is because like it's a Tony Hawk's level piece. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, it is going. And that is literally an hour for, or 55 minutes from unboxing to putting on the first print. And that's including Chatting. me talking about it and sort of going through things and, and all that sort of stuff. So, not bad. Not bad at all. And it'll be interesting to see how this first print comes out. I mean, the over-the-air update went through straight away. The app connected straight away. The the um, the slicer, you log into the slicer, and it immediately pulled through all my settings and the printer. So the slicer's already, already doing what it's supposed to do. I mean, it is giving it the beans, isn't it? If we don't have the door open, see if you can... Hold on. Yeah, you can hear it already. You can hear that. Like. <laughs> but to be fair, there's a giant radial fan down the side. But how um, does that compare to your Voron? How does it compare to the Voron? Noise-wise. Well, uh oh so if the voron was going at hold on there we go if the voron was going at 200 to 300 millimeters a second i would say it's probably a comparable noise hmm. um yeah i'd say i'd say it's comparable i'd say the voron's probably a little quieter but the voron also has quite a thick perspex around it but, but it, it's with anything isn't it the faster you go the noisier things are it's yeah absolutely i mean can you imagine trying to do this on an ender from five years ago it'd be on fire like it's a start we, 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 we've talked about this before it's astonishing to me how in five years time we have gone from sort of original maker bot original ulti makers original ender cr10s that kind of stuff because mike we must have been printing now for five or six years yeah like properly and i think i had the flash forward probably seven years ago i had a da vinci pro yeah, yeah. and that wasn't good because I while i had that i got an original ender and i thought that was much quieter 
it's it, it's crazy isn't it because like obviously this has come out like any cubic have you seen their new resin printer yes 1600 millimeters yeah. a Pro. and it's and it's a color changing resin printer that just you know they've not just gone for speed they've gone for that. yeah that, that's that's a game changer as well if it works yeah it's uh and then they've got that baby it's one that's coming out what it's what they're what they're bringing out i mean i so i've ju i've just done my review of the m3 max and i said so we bought the original photon when it came out right i've still got mine and, sitting here yeah i've still got mine it's in a cupboard somewhere but i've still technically got mine um, well, yeah, I don't use i'm, mine. I'm not gonna lie it's yeah. It's about as fast as my A net, about loud as my first A net A8 with A4. Yeah, it's probably about right. Yeah, I'd say it's probably comparable to that. It's probably as um, noisy as that. Oh, I bought the original S4, didn't I? Yes. That, that was, was loud. loud when that was slinging stuff around. Yeah, when that was slinging stuff about, that was loud, loud. But yeah, I mean, like, so I've just done the M3 Max review and to see where we've come in like three years is mind-blowing to think that we started out with a little photon that was a six inch screen it was rgb it was 1080p you know that 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 was it you'd get a hundred hours maybe 150 out of a screen you'd get the same out of the feps um i'd got even less out of that like the the photon is the reason why i've had resin in my ear in resin in my mouth had resin in my eyes, up my nose. It's been under my fingernails like a horrible Chinese torture device. Yeah. I found it inside of my shoe before. We really don't know how that happened. And it was cured, which was concerning. Um, it was, you know, the, uh, objectively terrible. It was, a, it was an awful experience. And now I, I'm using the M3 Max. And I'm using the M3 Max every day. Along with the, we're using the 8K Pegasus as well. And resin printing just isn't that complicated anymore so i was watching so obviously the any cubit you know the d2 they've just re uh, launched i was watching oh, i can't think of his name but modbot was unboxing it and he put a link in for a, a youtube channel and i watched his he actually went and broke the d2 apart and the actual part that actually sends the to cure was literally like that size that and it just blew my mind like the and it's a 2k screen it just blows your mind that they were able to do that and then they've got this little annie cube i've got a baby one coming out which is literally you could carry it in your pocket apparently not that i would but i'll probably try and it they've they've gone even smaller with like the detail to be able to use it it it's scary It's mad. It's mad to think how far we've come in that time and what we are achieving at this stage. There is a reality that I am regularly printing in resin prints at 0 0.03 mil layer heights. We've gone from, you know, we've gone from 0 0.2, I suppose, but but much larger layer heights as well on on, on FDM machines. It's it's amazing to me how far we've come in such a short space of time and it's amazing that there are companies that continue to push the boundaries so like the d2 pro where it's now we're now getting dlp printers entering the market where we don't have perishables like the uh, like the screen and things like that you know um it's it, it makes you wonder where we're going to be in five years time and you sort of well, you look, look at some at the, of the uh, HP machines that are hundreds of thousands of pounds, right? Look at the jash we've got with all the stuff that's included on that. Yeah, four hundred and eighty-nine dollars for that jash Pegasus. Yeah, I, I, uh, I know it's an early bird price, but what you are getting on that machine is mad. Auto refill. That's only like that's, two hundred and thirty quid dearer than the original photon. That's yep. that's the same price as my yeah mono X. And it is a 10.1 inch 8K auto resin refilling, carbon filter, heated building chamber, heated vat, 
leveled from the factory, NFET. And also that now comes in pink. And also yeah. now comes in pink, yeah, which is what everyone was asking for, obviously. Like it's it's astonishing to me what what we are what we where we are at and how much those those devices have come down in price, how achievable and affordable they are for most people. I mean, the fact the M3 Max is under a thousand pounds is insane. It's a 13 inch 7K yeah. printer. And it and, and, and it's scary. Grand. Yeah, and it's scary like companies like this can this is their first printer. Yeah. This they're, is they're their able, first machine. They've launched it and it's been it's a game changer. It, it yeah, like before this, everyone was talking about the Prusa XL because of what it is. I, and what it if meant if to anybody be. was asking me before, what should I buy? I want very little setup and I want, you know, I want good prints, but I want a decent amount of speed. I would have said, look, if you can get hold of a pre built Prusa, buy one of those. If you genuinely want enclosed, you want to do ABS, you want to do, then you need to be looking at an Ultimaker or a Raise. An Ultimaker will set you back between three and 5K. And a raise will set you back between four and eight, depending on what you get. Now, enter this, which with the AMS is £1,400, I think. Yeah, around about that. Something like that. Yeah, because the equivalent printer really the maker is five grand. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't be wrong. The machine isn't massive right it's 256 by 256 by 256 that's the only thing about this so far that i feel is going to be limiting for me like like but, i sorry but paul the, is it the 1499 dollars or 1499 dollars although with the way the pound's crashing at the moment i can't yeah. imagine that's going to be much of a difference or much longer but, uh, but the thing is, this is going to be a printer where you're going to do them prints that are multicolored quicker. Yeah, but it's not, like it's not like with the, with the stuff we print, we're not going to be doing the stuff we print on now. What you're going oh, to be? Oh, oh, Scott's asking a difficult question. So, for my personal machine, should I build a Voron or get the bamboo? Bit more Ooh. money and less fun. Okay. So, the first thing I will say is that i love my voron because i built it it does not work particularly well and it is annoying to maintain so i've got an issue at the moment with my extruder i need to break down and completely rebuild my extruder from scratch and redo all of my and redo all of my wiring if you were asking me whether or not you should buy a voron or the bamboo i would say no I think you should buy the bamboo. I don't think you should buy the ball. Depends on what you're going to be printing and what size. However, you're going to however, if you are asking me, should you buy a V core, one of the rat rigs, or a bamboo? I would honestly say, look at a 300 cube rat rig, and there's a lot of options that you're going to have with that you can there's a mult there's there's a tool changer mod that's coming very soon an official tool changer mod um there is there is multi-material upgrades and idex mods that you can do for the uh for that which would be again pretty amazing um this is a really great machine i am not i mean again i haven't seen it finish a print yet so reserving judgment this is a really nice package. It's very feature rich. It's clearly a premium product. But for me, I I'd probably be leaning towards saying get get rat league still. Now I haven't seen this finished printing yet, so maybe I'll say, right, well, this is perfect. It also depends what it's going to be used for, though. Evening, James. Uh well, sort of, yeah. I mean, look, this will print out the box. Yeah, the V-Core IDEX is coming soon. Now, if all you require is two colors or two materials, so for example, one of the big things this, this purports about is that, so one of these uh, is is support material. Uh, well, you can't so, see is that, that a water-soluble one? It's not water-soluble. What it is is breakaway supports. 
So it does. So on your interface layer, it does one layer of this support material, and then it and then it literally um, and then it will literally put your put your support and the and the supports just just pop right off. So not all the supports are done out of it. It's not like PVA. Yeah. So when you're printing PVA, all the support is PVA, and then normally like the actual the actual print itself is PLA or whatever. Um, this does most of the support material in PLA, and then it's the interface just layer that does the support material, just and it just it. apparently it just pops off. Like meant to be really amazing. So I'll be interested to see how that does. One thing I will say. A fourteen hundred pound machine should come with more than two hundred and fifty grams of filament. Like, okay, there's you could debate. There's a kilo of filament here because there's some of the PLA. There's some. Oh, there's some white PLA. There's some of the support material, and there's some of the PA carbon fiber. Like. There's a kilo of filament overall, but not being funny, like, where's the rest? Like, where's the rest of my filament? Why have I only got 250 grams of each of your filaments? Could you not have given me a full spool? So, like, 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 like so, like, this bamboo, like, as much as you can go fast, just imagine how much filament you can go through in 24 hours now. Yeah. And actually, to be honest with you, it's one of the big issues I've had with the M3 Max. The it takes a litre to fill it. If you're doing a big print, which you can do now, it's a lot of resin. Yeah. It's a lot of resin. Like, I've managed to find... Um, so I've managed to find somewhere on AliExpress that does a rebrand of Sunlu uh, resin. And they're doing it for sixteen pounds a litre, and it's that's delivered from the UK. That's not bad. So that's a really good. It's, it's the best price I've found of any of, of of any resin at the moment. It's just regular resin. Oh, and we're done. See, but no. resin. So, like, resin doesn't go far, does it? Really, like a litre of resin. Not as far as I'd like. No. No, it, it just like if you want to play around and. Hollow it and eventually so we will. All right. Well, we've learned a lesson straight away about whether or not we should have used hairspray. I think. Oh no! That just that comes right off. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. And then whoop. hairspray works. So that is a pretty astonishing benchy so let's see if we can get that to focus one second this is the benchy so the only thing i'll say is that this part here is very very shiny and this part here is very matte now i don't know if that's the filament I don't know if something changed at that point, if it changed I've, speed. I've seen or... a few posts about that on their, their group, you know, with people saying, like, a part of it's dull and a part shiny. I think it was last Did week. I was reading an about I didn't read any further. I probably went to sleep. <laughs> well, thanks for answering that question, Carl. <laughs> but, fair, but fair enough. Um, so you can so see there's a very cool. definite, that's the speed change. Yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, that is a very definite difference in color. Like, it goes from being a very nice shiny color to being a still a very nice finish, but a very matte finish. What temperature and does it print at? That. What's, it's literally the one that was on there. So, I don't know. Success. I don't know if it tells you what it's. Because does it when it goes faster, does it increase the heat on the hot end? Because that's normally what you have to do, doesn't it? If the faster one you go, one would imagine it does. Yes. I mean, look, I'm not being funny. That has done. So that, that that's the best first benchy first print I've seen. 
so like i mean even if we look on the deck like even the deck the overhangs the circles to, to be honest it's better i've got my printers tuned you've seen my prints i couldn't beat that i couldn't like that is the first and layer to be fair it did it in 18 minutes yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Think... so like so that first layer is bang on look at that i, I was it last year james i did one in about 40 minutes then i me end of seven yeah. it looked all right but nothing like that as i say there's a very definite change in color but outside of that, <laughs> I tell you what, I'm impressed with that. That's that uh, is that is impressive. That made me that laugh. That is actually very impressive. Um. So I mean, with that, guys and dolls, I, I'm not going to start another print because I want to put this in the. I want to put this into the office where where I can put it on a stable surface and make sure that's not affecting anything. And then I want to print some stuff where I've defined the slice settings in uh, in Bamboo Slicer so that I know that it's not going to suddenly change speed or something like that. I know it's got a level of consistency. Again, I, 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 I absolutely agree that there are a lot of people who want things to be done ridiculously fast, right? However, what I care about, because of the types of models that we do, what I care about is quality. the quality that this can finish at. So if yeah. this can finish at this at this quality, but I have to lower the speed a little bit, that's fine. If yeah. I have to wait an extra five or six hours for my print to finish, I have no there's no commercial incentive for me to be finished any quicker than when I am. So like that that well, is amazing. Well I'm finishing off that life size Gandalf. Yeah. Because it takes so long, I said to James, can you print one of the parts for me? So the part he put on, one piece is seven days long. Yeah. There's 15 pieces of that. Yeah. So and if we, I mean, so admittedly, that piece wouldn't fit in this because that piece actually takes up the full, almost the full bed of, uh, of my sidewinder. But if you were printing it in this and you were printing at 200 millimeters a second, it would be roughly three times faster to print it on this than it would be to print it on my sidewinder. And my sidewinder is going at like 80 millimeters a second for walls and all that kind of stuff. So like it's going, it's going at a pace already for a bed slinger. This would be nearly three times faster. And it looks to me like it would turn out an absolutely stunning level of quality. So, with that in mind, guys, we are going to end the live stream there. Thank you very much for joining us. Scott, chuck us, a, um, chuck us an email and we'll, t we'll have a chat about coming down this weekend and, and sorting some bits and pieces out. I actually need to have a chat with you about more panels anyway. Um, so chuck us an email and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat. I'm going to put this in the office. Keep an eye out on the channel for the review. A big thanks to our channel sponsor, Direct Computing. Take a look at the link in the video description and you will see uh, where you can support those guys. And if you want your own bamboo printer, they are live for pre-order on their website right now. We do not have an affiliate link. This is not a sponsored video from them. Well, this is just us seeing a printer telling you whether or not we like it. <coughs> no commercial incentive here whatsoever. I really like what how quickly this went together. It went together in under an hour. Um, and uh, and that's with the AMS up there as well. It calibrated itself. And that first print came out really, really nice. So thank you very much for joining us, Carl. Thank you very much, Mike, right. for joining us in your new little dungeon. <coughs> we will see you both very soon. Cheers, guys and dolls. See you later. Bye, all. Bye.